Welcome to Bible study. I'm so excited that you decided to join me again for part two of Is God Responsible for Evil? And I've subtitled this uh, God's Original Intent. So after watching video number one, in which we went through Genesis chapter one, hopefully you got the idea established in your heart the truth that God's original intention for creation was good. Let's start with prayer. Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you that you are not a far off God, but that you are a right here, right now God, who desires intimacy with his children. I thank you, Lord, that it is your heart that all humans would come to know you and that they would become your children. Because not everyone is your child. Everyone is your creation, but not everyone is your child. So I thank you that your word, you've given us your word, you've given us your Holy Spirit so that we could know you more. Father, I pray open hearts and open minds to receive this word today. And Holy Spirit, bring revelation. We know that your will is that we would know you. And so we thank you, Father. Thank you for this time, Lord. Bless those who are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. So grab your Bible, your journal, or notebook, uh, something to write with, and we'll continue on with our study. I will be reading out of the ESV version. Please pause me at any time. Look up the scriptures in another version. Write them down and look them up. Meditate them. Ask Holy Spirit for revelation. And using multiple versions is very helpful in this. So we already looked at Genesis chapter 1 where God created all the heaven and the earth. Let's just look at verse uh, chapter 2 verses 1 to 3. <clears throat> Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it, God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. So that's where lesson one ended, and we said that God was finished with his work, and it was very good. He said that in Genesis chapter 1. Verse 31, it was good, very good. And he was done creating and he sat down to rest. And I challenged you in the last teaching to find another place in the Bible where God stood up and started working again. You won't find that. He was done and he rested. And he continues to rest from his work because everything was set in motion. Everything was created to reproduce and so God's heart, as we see in the Garden of Eden, was to have a place for his children to be well provided for and have fellowship with him. So let's continue in chapter 2, seeking uh, God's heart in the matter uh, where it concerns us. And keeping in mind that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever so if we can see his heart in original creation, we can know that his heart is still the same toward us as it was from day one. So let's look in chapter two to see what happened. Keep in mind, God didn't change. Circumstances change as we go through this word, but God's heart and desire and intent with original creation never changed. So let's look in chapter 2. Uh, let's go with verse 4. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. When no bush of the field was yet in the land and no small plant of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the land and there was no man to work the ground, and a mist was going up from the land and was watering the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground 
and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living creature. That's awesome. So the first man, Adam, was created from the dust of the earth. He's the only one that was. We'll keep reading about that. Verse 8, And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Now we know that this is day 6, because in chapter 1 it gave us an overview of what was created on which day, and he created man and women on the sixth day. So now chapter 2, the, the Bible is not sequential. You've got to put it together in time frames so that it makes sense. Well, he created man and women in his image on day six. So chapter two is going into detail about what happened on day six of creation. So in verse nine, and out of the ground, the Lord made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We need to pause here because many times people overlook this fact. There are two trees are mentioned here. One is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but there was also the tree of life. And when we get to the end of chapter 3, the tree of life is extremely important. Remember, we're looking in the question, is God responsible for evil? Let's keep going. Verse 10. A river flowed out of Eden to water the garden, and there it divided and became four rivers. The name of the first is the Pishon. It is the one that flowed around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There we are again. Good and more good. Bdellium and onyx stone are there. Verse 13, the name of the second river is the Gihon. It is the one that flowed around the whole land of Cush. And the name of the third river is the Tigris, which flows east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. 15, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. Okay, again, what was God's original intent in all of creation? Why did he create the heavens and the earth? Why did he create man? Well, it says in verse 15 that he took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and to keep it. He gave man something to do with his time. See, God is timeless. Time doesn't matter to God. But when we read in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, there was a mark where time could now be measured. It was the beginning of creation. It wasn't the beginning of God. It was the beginning of creation. So there marks a time period where we now can mark things by time. And God called them days. When we looked in Genesis chapter 1, he called it the day and the night. He made the light and the, the sun and the moon and, and dark and light. And so now time can be a measured quantity. Pretty cool. All of science can be explained uh, by and through the Bible and God. So that's another offshoot. And if science doesn't explain it right well, then they're not right yet. They need to figure it out. So that was bonus information. So... Let's see, where were we? So God put, this is verse 15, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, you may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. This is extremely important to take a note, make a note of this. God spoke this to Adam. There's no mention of Eve yet. We'll get there. But God spoke this directly to Adam. 
And the tree, he said, was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. He told him you can't eat it. He didn't tell him you can't touch it. So make a note of that as well. Now, that was verse 17. And directly following that verse is 18. And it says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. So again, this follows directly. He told the man, he put him in the garden. He said, you work it, you keep it. We saw in, in chapter one that he had given man dominion. And we'll look more about what does that mean? He created the earth for man. Everything we needed was in that garden, was able to reproduce itself. He said, go make more babies, multiply yourselves. The animals will continue to multiply. The plants will continue. Everything you ever need will continue to reproduce itself. So even that when there are more humans on the earth, everything will still be provided for you. This was God's heart. This was his original intent. And he gave man choice. See, Without choice, we're robots. In order to love, you have to have a choice to love. So a lot of people ask, well, why did he even put that tree in the garden? Well, why don't we look at, we, we often ask the wrong question. We really do. He had to give man choice so he could choose to love God or not. Like I said, if we don't have a choice, we can't love. See, there's freedom in love. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom for what? Well, freedom from everything that would hold you down and not having a choice would put you in bondage we always have a choice if you watched uh, the lesson the other day about John the Baptist I said even John the Baptist had a choice to believe in Jesus or not even John the Baptist questioned if you didn't um, see that lesson it was about um are you oh there, here's the title thank you lord it was are you the one and it was about even john the baptist questioned and even john the baptist was given the choice to believe that jesus is the one or not even though john the baptist was created to proclaim the coming messiah he still got to choose if he believed it or not Oh, that was good, Lord. Thank you. So there had to be one tree. I mean, every tree of the whole entire world, Adam was allowed to eat of them. He was allowed to touch every tree. He could do anything he wanted except eat of that tree. That was the one thing God said, don't eat that tree, of that tree. And isn't that just like humans? The one thing they're not allowed, they, he has everything he needs forever. And he decide, he chooses to eat that, the one thing he couldn't have. Whew, there's a lot in that lesson right there. Focusing on what we do have instead of what we don't have would be really helpful in our lives. That was another bonus. Okay, so that tree is in the garden to provide a choice uh, for Adam so that he is able, we have a choice, we have a free will, so that we are able to respond back in love to God's love toward us. Okay, verse 18, Then the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Now, out of the ground, the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. 
and whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. See, this is part of the dominion that God gave us over the land. God didn't want to name the animals. He said, they're yours. You name them, Adam. This is your playground. This is your sandbox. All of this I made for you. So go play in your garden, work the land, name the animals, enjoy. Nothing heavy, nothing heavy, no heavy burden. Verse 20, and the man, the man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was found, not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man and while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. This is phenomenal. In chapter one of Genesis, he said, God said, let us make man in our image. Verse 27, male and female, he created them. See, Adam was created out of the dust, but Eve was created out of Adam's rib, which means Eve existed in Adam. Think about that. Together, let, let's read the next verse. Watch, watch. Verse 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. Verse 24 says, The man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast. King James says, Cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. That's awesome. Because in the beginning, when God created Adam, Eve was literally one flesh, bone of his bones. He was already in, and so the Lord extracted this rib from Adam, created Eve from Adam. And so then when a husband and wife come together, the two become one. That's amazing. God is so amazing. And notice that Adam was created from the dust. Eve was created from his rib. Every other human on this earth was created from the seed, Adam's sperm, Eve's eggs. This is important. So every single human that has existed ever since, okay, except Jesus, you know, he's a different birth. Uh, he, we'll talk about him later. Uh, they came from the seed of Adam and Eve. See, this is super important to get because as we see the fall in chapter three, see Adam and Eve were created in perfection in holiness and righteousness, this was God's heart. These were his babies, perfect, walking in fellowship with him. This was God's intention. Everything was created for them, provided for them. He said, go work it, tend the garden. Everything they needed was provided. They were perfect, no shame, no guilt. It said in verse 25, and the man and his wife were both naked, and they were not ashamed. There was no guilt, no condemnation, no shame, nothing. And only one directive from the Lord that he gave just to Adam. Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Saints, this is God's heart. From the beginning. Meditate on that. Pause and meditate on that. 
before we go on and see what happened. Keep in mind that God never changed his heart toward you. Is God responsible for evil? No, he is not. And as we go into chapter 3, you'll see how evil came in. But God did not usher it in. He did not will it to come in. Remember, he created the earth for us, gave it to us, and said, have dominion over it. For God to step in and remove that dominion would make God a liar. And the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. He can't lie. He can't go back on his word. He said, have dominion. So let's see what happened. Chapter 3, verse 1. Now, the serpent was more crafty, and some version says subtle, than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. Now, he made the serpent, but did he make evil? Let's find out. He said to the woman, this is now the serpent, he said to the woman, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? Now we'll talk about this serpent. See, here's the thing. The serpent was made by God. Everything that God made was good and very good. What the serpent is doing right now is not good. So we're going to look at Satan and the influence of Satan on the earth and how this, that this serpent is doing is not good and the serpent is being influenced by the devil because serpents can't talk. So who is speaking through this serpent is the devil. And we'll look at this. And, and the, why did the devil choose a serpent? Well, because it was the more crafty, they slither and they sneak and they're quiet and they're subtle as the other versions say. And so the devil chose this snake to speak through. We know that serpents can't speak. Just like the donkey, if you read about Balaam's donkey, the Lord spoke through the donkey. Donkeys can't talk. So it wasn't the donkey talking and this wasn't the serpent talking. So it was a different spiritual force. And as we see what it says, we know it's not the Holy Spirit. We know it's not the voice of God. Because here's what it said. Did God actually say, you shall not eat of the tree in the garden? What is this serpent's voice saying or doing? It's questioning God. Can I tell you, saints, all the devil has to do is question. S plant a seed of doubt. Did God really say? Now see, here's the thing. Why did he go to Eve and not Adam? Who was there when God said, do not eat of this tree? Well, look back. Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, in verse 18, it says it's not good that man should be alone. Well, verse 17, God says, you shall not eat of that tree. So Adam was alone when God said, don't eat of that tree. So the serpent didn't come to Adam. He's cunning. He's crafty. He went to Eve. Why? Because Eve had secondhand knowledge of what God said. Saints, you need firsthand revelation. I can hear from God and I can tell you these things. But you, just like Eve, can be easily deceived if you don't hear from God yourself. God wants to teach you all things. Adam heard from God directly. Adam told Eve what God said. The serpent attacked Eve and 
question, did God really say? So he planted a seed of doubt in Eve, which left her vulnerable to doubt. And we see the effect of that doubt to this day. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. But we also see God's plan and God's heart. He knew what would happen. He planned Jesus in the beginning. We looked at John chapter 1. So don't lose heart, saints. God knew this would happen. He had a pre-planned the solution, which is Jesus. We're going to look at all this. If you stick with me through this study, you will be so set free in this in these in areas you don't even know that you need to be set free. So he said in verse 1 of chapter 3, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? Verse 2, and the woman said to the serpent, listen to what she says, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. That's true. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. That's true. Hold on. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. See, Eve didn't hear this directly from God, so she added to the word that God spoke. So she added something God didn't say. How many times do we think we know what God has said according to something a preacher, a pastor, love them, love them, but we can't rely on what they say. We've got to take what they say and glean from their revelation and get into the word ourself so that we can say, God said. And when the devil comes in our ear and asks, well, did God really? Is God really good? It, blah, blah, blah. Whatever he says, we can say no. Get behind me, Satan. God said this. And here I go again to John 14, 26. Turn there with me. It says the Holy Spirit, the helper, is your teacher. And he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all things that he has taught you. Saints, it's not on your shoulders to teach yourself these truths. Show up. Ask Holy Spirit. Bring revelation. John 15, 5, apart from me, you can do nothing. That's Jesus. He doesn't ask you to figure this out on your own. He wants to reveal these truths to you and set you free. So I'm so excited, again, that you're joining me, you're listening, you're digging in the, the word. You are getting set free. Oh, Jesus, thank you. This is awesome. Father, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you for your truth that sets us free. I thank you that you never leave us or forsake us. I thank you that it is your heart that we would know you and the power of your resurrection. I thank you that through your word, through seed, time, and harvest, we are all coming to know you more and more every day. And being set free in areas we didn't even know we needed set free from. So we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So this was lesson two of Is God Responsible for Evil? In lesson three, we're going to delve into chapter three and see the effects of the fall. But we're also going to see how God's heart never changed. Oh, thank you for joining me. Again, I encourage you to visit our website, www.thefishfarm.org. Become a partner with us or a one-time donor, a prayer partner with us. God is doing amazing things. And when you sow into other ministries, you are a partaker of the fruit of that ministry. So saints, stay in the word. The word works. God bless you.